Hey, good evening, everyone. Welcome to August's edition of All Access Belize. I'm your host, David Kafka, and my sidekick, Serena Hoffman. My daughter is in the background. Um, she'll be kind of handling logistics and things like that. And, and we have Kim and Dean with us. Hey, guys. Hello. 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 Pleasure. I'm coming, I'm coming to you from San Pedro. Be heading to Placencia on Sunday. And Kim and Dean, where are y'all at right now? So we are in Placencia in Maya Very Beach area. Good. Very good, Maya Beach. All right, and then Serena's in Florida, as we know. Um, so I'd like to welcome everyone. And uh, basically what we cover is your questions about Belize and nothing is off limits. We talk about the good, the bad, the ugly. Um, if you wanna ask it, we'll talk about it. And this week, we have some pretty, I mean, this month, we have uh, some pretty cool guests. Um, they hail from, where do y'all hail from? <laughs> that was smooth, dude. really smooth. <laughs> we're from Calgary, Alberta, is where we moved from, but we were only there for five years. So previous to that, we were in Kelowna, BC, and that's where we consider home for us. So Very good. And so we'll we'll introduce them in a minute and kind of get their take on things, but they have a very interesting background and they're applying all that knowledge to Belize and how they help our clients with Remax um, to purchase properties here and and not just Remax, but other people as well, vacationing. They have a, a well, they'll tell you the story. Um, and as you know, we are Remax First Choice, but we're not here to sell you any property. We're here to just um, basically educate you. And then also, as you know, I have my asset management business where I put deals together. That's Caribbean Capital Group. And what we do is we assemble deals and we have you come alongside us passively so you can, you know, basically earn some passive income on real property here in Belize. So to get started, let's again welcome Kim and Dean. And, and so tell us a little bit about what you did in Canada, um, what you're doing here. Um, and then guys, while y'all are, and ladies, while y'all are listening to their story, go ahead and throw in your questions in the question and answer box. Um, and then we can answer it after we kind of do the introductions. So we'll turn it on over to you all and tell us a bit, you know, you told us where you're from, but tell us what you did there, how long you've been in Belize, um, what you're doing, where you're living. I mean, you told us where, but you renting, you buying, tell us a little bit of everything. Okay. Um, so yes, my name's Kim. And back home in Canada, I worked as a hairdresser for ever in a day probably about 28, 29 years. So I'm still doing a little bit of that here. That wasn't the intention when I came, but word travels fast. When people find out that you do any type of business that you did back home, they're always excited to get in on that. So that's kind of ex expanded. But in the meantime, I um, have been working with Remax First Choice and um, got on with David David and Dean had known each other for a couple of years prior to they were working on doing some development projects together. And um, so when we met David and it just seemed like a good fit, he was needing some extra people in the office and we were that's something that Dean and I were always excited about doing was real estate. We never got into it back home. But then when we had come and Five years prior, we had come to Belize for the very first time and fell in love with Belize. So for us, when I was looking at doing a career shift and I was wanting to do the real estate end of things. And so, but then once we had come and knew that our direction was going to be here in Belize, then I decided to just kind of jump in with both feet when I got here rather than pursuing that back home. So um, yeah, we live here in my beach. We run an Airbnb called Sea La Vie. So we live on site and then we have two rentals as well. We're on the beach side. Um, we love it. So we do, we do that. The 
Airbnb, Remax, I do hair. Dean over here does <laughs> a little bit of everything else. Yeah, <laughs> I do everything else. So it, uh, my background comes in the engineering world, mechanical and electrical engineering. Uh, 27, 28 plus years doing that kind of stuff uh, all around British Columbia. Um, I moved around or we moved around a lot with, uh, with the company I was with or the companies. Uh, I seemed to go to new locations to start up offices. Uh, so spent uh, three plus years in Seattle, um, then Kelowna, BC, then Seattle again, and then Kelowna, and then Calgary, and then Belize. So um, each time we moved around, it was kind of a, a new office, new start for us. Um, we're just kind of, you know, moving to Belize was people always say, uh, what if, oh my goodness, you're moving to a whole nother country. What are you doing? Like, it's no different than moving to a new city or a new country. Like it, it's no big deal to us. Uh, mm -hmm. so, uh, coming to Belize was sure. Let's go for it. That, uh, um, I, one thing that a lot of Kim's clients have always said is what, what if, what, mm -hmm. what if it doesn't work out? Well, if it doesn't work out, then go back. Who gives a crap? And then really. you change it. <laughs> so, you know, you're not committed for life just because you're changing things up a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So, so from my standpoint, in the engineering and construction background, uh, architectural design, um, I've done a lot of uh, um, AutoCAD and Revit and 3D modeling for uh, homes and buildings uh, over the years. Um, coming to Belize, I, I really didn't really have the intent of really getting into designing and uh, that kind of side of things, but it was more or less to get into the land development side of things. And, and as Kim had mentioned, that's how I met David in the first place. Uh, I'm trying to purchase a couple of developments in Belize and uh, moving forward, um, which good and bad, they didn't go through, or I guess COVID sort of put a hamper on some of the investment uh, people we had in, in, involved. So, uh, but hey, things are coming back to life, which is good. Um, but in the meantime, Kim, with the real estate side of things, uh, of course, I start walking through houses with her and, and you, I, I sort of cringe at the construction of some stuff and try and look the other way. And it, uh, it sort of got a little frustrating. And then some people found out my background and started asking if I'd consider doing uh, home inspections. So, uh, so I started doing home inspections and it's kind of interesting in this country because, well, five, 10 years ago, you can buy a nice house on the beach for 200, $300,000. Now people are spending a million. Well, now they want to kind of see what are they investing a million dollars in. Mm -hmm. Before it was, ah, it's 200 grand. If it works, it doesn't work. No big deal. I'll just knock it down and build something else. But now when people are starting to drop a million dollars on a house, they like to see what the, what, is it really worth it for starters? Um, and honestly, the, the construction in the country is actually pretty good in general. Um, there are some everybody's a contractor and everybody knows how to do everything. And if you ask them if you know how to do something, yes, I know how to do it, but it doesn't mean they actually know how to do it. Everybody's uh, a realtor too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. For sure. That's, that's a good point on that one. Um, so yeah, it's uh, doing the home inspections has been uh, kind of an eye opener on, on things. Um, of course, some sellers don't like the, that somebody's coming in and criticizing their house. And I sort of get stuck in the middle of, well, if I say this, Kim could lose a, a sale, but the same token, I still got to sleep at night. So I got to sort of tell mm -hmm. that client that hired me to do the home inspection, the truth of what I saw. And sometimes mm -hmm. that's the, the best thing. So it is kind of an interesting position to be in. And, uh, you know, it's, it's good to a, educate the buyer, the seller, um, what, what they have. And, um, and at least you're going in with your eyes wide open that you know exactly what it is that you're going to be dealing with when you come yeah. so that it's like, okay, well, these are the 10 items that are wrong. Well, at least I know, and I'm prepared for that rather than coming and then being choked that these things weren't yeah, I'd, noted. Right. I'd say the biggest exactly. thing for people to realize is, uh, electrical is not good. Um, and plumbing seems to be a problem. Those are the two elements that are hidden in the walls that people don't see. Mm -hmm. But knowing that is my background, I notice it really quick and I can tell we need help here. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of uh, where I've ended up going. And uh, obviously I helped Kim out with the real estate side of things too. So um, thank goodness. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen people do plumbing without gluing the pipe. So yeah. <laughs> when they pressurize it, it starts to leak and everybody wonders why. 
Um, so thanks for that. And uh, we have some questions coming in, so that's great. We'll get to them in a second. Um, how many times have you retired from engineering? <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one, man. I think three times. I think it's three times now. I've, I've said enough is enough. I'm done. And uh, hung up the, the computer and pencil and decided to go hunting and fishing. And then a few months go by and somebody phones me up and voila, I'm back at it again. <laughs> so, back in it. That's, <laughs> like, yeah, that's yeah, awesome. I'll go for a little bit. And then next, you know, five years later, I'm like, dang, <laughs> I thought I got out that's of this. Awesome. <laughs> So when, when they came to me about working, you know, we have to deal with the work permit and all. And so, you know, the question is, is do you get a work permit under Remax or do you get a work permit under, you know, a company you set up? And, and because of their background, it's always better for them to set up a company and do a work permit, including everything they do. That way, you know, Kim can cut hair. Whereas if you got a work permit for Remax, she couldn't cut hair legally. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. Not 100% sure how that's, you know, basically policed, if you will. But again, you know, so they set it up. And, and Kim, you still have clients that, that want you to go back to Canada, right? Because you're flying back quite often to do hair. Yeah, and, exactly. Uh, that's pretty. And, and she's kind of she's met a ton of people here. She's doing a ton of hair in and, and the reserve. And and all that so it's been pretty cool so so they're doing quite a bit of things and uh so we we have some uh we have some questions coming in so let's get to them and then we can kind of expand on ooh, we have some good questions a lot of questions so um they want to know what places in belize have you spent time in um and if you have any regrets uh so when we first came, we, our very first time, we were out at the Keys. So the Keys are absolutely beautiful. We were there for a week and both Dean and I, when we were sitting in the airport on our last day being here, we were like, oh my gosh, we love it here. How can we move here? We had traveled lots of different areas before, but had never had that feeling of how can we move here? And so then we ended up booking again, coming back about three months later and we probably did five trips within like a year and a half span. And every time that we would come, we would go to different areas. So we come in, rent a car. We did San Pedro. We did Burrell Boom. We did Corazal. We did Spanish Lookout, you know, toured all up and through there. And the very first time that we came into Placencia was the first time that I felt I could live here like that this felt like home to me. And I feel like because there's a lot of expats here and because there's so many people that are doing what, what we've done, it feels more comfortable. Whereas, you know, if you're, you know, wanting to go out into the bush and kind of be by yourself, that wasn't what I was looking for. So for me, when I came to Placencia and there was the people, there was the expats, like, you know, there was the nice homes, the manicured yards, you know, things like that, but it still had lots of the um, naturalness of, of Belize, mm -hmm. but yeah. it had a comfort to it. So mm -hmm. that's when we knew. And so, you know what, it, it's often, it's funny because oftentimes when I do go back home, like people will ask me, you know, do you, do you have any regrets? Like, you know, would you change anything? And it's like, you know what, it feels so good to be here that we know that it's where we're meant to be, which is yeah. huge. Yeah. You know, we didn't come along alone either. Did you? Well, no. Yeah, we did come alone. No. Oh, in, oh with the dogs, you mean? <laughs> Thank you. So, yes. We, we ended up bringing our two pups from home. They're palm cheese. So they're two blonde Pomeranian Chihuahuas, Sandy and Danny. And then we recently adopted a new little gal. Her name's Rizzo. And she's, the, the vet calls her a pot licker. When we got her, she was four months. So she's six months old now. And she's doing awesome. And she's, she's a bit of a tank now. When we first got her, she was at a bag of bones. But now she's doing really good and fitting in yeah. with our family really well. I'd so. say that's kind of one of the drawbacks in, in Belize is you see a lot of dogs lying around and that need rescuing. That you want to and, help every single one of them? Yeah, like we drive down the street and all that I hear from people, oh, oh, I'm like, no way, we're not another one. We're keep going, like enough already. 
But yeah. Uh, yeah, this last one we found on a deserted beach, uh, boat access, a lot that we were showing uh, a couple guys in. And I came back to the boat and Kim was sitting there with this little tiny pup. And I'm like, where the frick did this thing come from? <laughs> like, honestly, yeah. there's nobody around for miles in either direction. And it was just, uh, yeah, yeah, it's unbelievable. She was meant to be ours for sure. Yeah, yeah. for sure. It's really sweet. I know yeah. um, Monday, Monday I was in Corazal with uh, Richard, you know, our agent up there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I brought out a little calico kitten that can't walk. Oh, and it just beautiful and broke my heart. And, and as y'all may know, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm on the board of the Humane Society in Placencia. It just gets to the point where it just kills you anymore seeing everything, you know, I'm just kind of jaded, not jaded, but I'm just, it just breaks my heart seeing some of the things we see, you know, yeah. um, but Anyways, it's one. It, that one, that yeah. should get any easier. It is. And so, and, and if you know my story, you know, I've, I've been here over 13 years and retired fireman, um, started a landscape company, sold the company and moved here with Serena and her mom and uh, started up as a assistant at Remax and then worked my way up to brokerage. And we too spent time everywhere throughout the whole country and and we felt the same way in Placencia. It just, we love it a lot. And, and now you, you all may know that, you know, I split my time probably 60, 40, you know, 60 in San Pedro, 40 in Placencia, at least for another couple of years, and then it'll be full time in, in Placencia. But I like being able to live back and forth and who knows? I mean, I fell in love with some of the places in Corozal. So, Mm -hmm. We might have a house there someday, and I just need a plane to go back and forth. There you so, go. I think, uh, sorry, David, to cut you off there, that people that have never been to Belize or have only been to San Pedro, because that seems to be the tourist number one, that's what gets them most of the marketing is people go to San Pedro and, and Burst Key. Um, Belize is so different. It's such a small country, but it's so different in every area. Yeah. Like Hopkins, which is 45 minutes away from us, is a completely different Vibe. And vibe, vibe environment like yeah. it's just 100 different but it's belize and it's only 45 minutes away so mm -hmm. if you come to the country you can't just go i'm going to move to placencia mm -hmm. it works yeah. for us but we know lots of people that love hopkins mm -hmm. and don't like placencia it's just like a different vibe different types of right. activities so it's really uh people need to understand that they got to look at different areas or talk to somebody that's been to a lot of different areas to get the mm -hmm. pros and cons of each one and find the one that suits them and then focus on those areas. Because no matter yeah. where you go, the people are awesome. Yeah. That's yeah. one thing that stands the same of the, the all people. of Belize. Yeah. The, the locals yeah. are awesome, super friendly. And I remember when we first moved here, we were renting um, uh, in plantation and uh, Dean was working during the day. And so, you know, I'd kind of wait for him to go out. And then once I went out a couple of times and I was like, oh no, gosh, this is easy. Like I feel totally comfortable. So I'd go all the way to Belmpan by myself driving the car. So the biggest thing was that I didn't have a, a cell phone with a Belize number. So it was like, well, who am I going to call? Uh, well, I'm like, well, I know that all the people are so nice. Somebody will stop and help me. And so it was exactly. like, once I got that, then it was like, you know, now I go everywhere. So even, even with Remax, it's, you know, we do, obviously we live in Placencia, so we tend to stay closer to here, Hopkins, but we've got listings in um, Toledo, um, Corazal. So it's like, we go all over Belize, wherever our clients, you know, want to look, we're prepared to go there because it gives us the opportunity to get a See. better understanding of different parts of Belize too. And we enjoy that. So it allows us to see different parts in more exactly. detail yeah exactly we tell people you know we can't tell you where to live you have to you know decide so we yeah. always tell you pick the top two three places and visit each one yeah and then you'll get yeah. the feeling um you know it's not right or wrong you know no. it's just no. different and it's what you prefer yeah so yeah. um is it taryn um i, I think it's, it's taryn um she's asking what do you miss most um that you can't get in Belize. Okay. Uh, traffic. So family aside, okay. Family aside. And the funny thing is, here we live on the Caribbean Sea. The thing that I miss the most is sushi. Good quality. Really? 
<laughs> yeah. You need and to come so, to San Pedro and eat at uh, Joto. I know. We tried him at the Lobster Fest and it was like, oh my gosh, where's his store? So I looked him up and he's also got one out over in... Um, San Ignacio, I think. Yeah, San Ignacio as well. So we're like, okay, well, we go there often enough that we'll have to, you know, check <laughs> yeah. that out. So, yeah, definitely. I, I would say um, there's nothing really I miss, honestly. Honestly, it, it was funny because the... Um, um, my kids or one of our kids went camping the other day and I said, isn't it weird that camping is one of the things that you actually miss? Like I actually miss going out camping <laughs> out of all the things that you have available to yourself in North America was going camping and then we just don't go camping here. We just go fishing or kayaking off the, off the front beach. Here. So it's, it's just different, but. Uh, and now that we've gotten the um, ordering from Amazon thing under control and there were, you know, they they come now every second week. So it's like, that was one of the things in the beginning that we did miss, you know, it was like having easy access to those things that, you know, you're familiar with that you want. Well, for, you can get anything on Amazon. So, you know, every two weeks, ding, ding, there he is. Yeah. You're not getting it tomorrow. You just got to schedule it. So that's, that's the only difference. I that's just ordered like $8,000 worth of furniture for a client on, at Ashley furniture, and they're going to be delivering it in the next two weeks, you know? Yeah. So it's been, right. you know, it'll take him a month, but he gets exactly what he wants yeah. and they'll deliver it in the house. So you can get pretty much anything. Mm -hmm. um, the questions are coming in. So it's pretty good. Thank okay. you so much. Um, and, also, we have a poll that Serena will put up. I, I think, Serena, we have one or two polls. And then uh, Serena will pick a winner. And I had the privilege of co-authoring two books. The second one is just coming out right now. It's called Think Big. And uh, one of my issues was I, I don't think big enough. And, and my mentors always tell me, if you're going to think, you might as well think bigger. And so we're, you know, we're trying to think you know, and think big. So you'll, you'll get a copy of that. I'll order it on Amazon and send it straight to you. Um, and so the, the, the poll is about, you know, some of the things you're worried about and um, what kind of investments you're interested in. So um, if you answer that, if you don't mind, and then that helps us to know who to bring on, what content to write and how we can serve you better. And one of the people who answers the poll will win a copy of that book. So uh, Daryl's asking, have you heard about anyone driving down to Belize from Canada? Mm -hmm. I was thinking about driving down with a truck and camper to place on my property until I decide how long I was wanting to spend in Belize. Any comments? Getting through Mexico. We're wanting to apply for the retirement plan. I realized that the value of the truck and trailer I have to pay 30% on any other concerns getting the trailer and truck into Belize. Um, good question, Daryl. Um, I actually have a, a good friend of mine. He's, he's, we're partners in a boat and he's already driven a car down and he's coming in October and he's gonna be driving another car down. Um, so um, I know many people that do it uh, especially people who have animals. Uh, another client that just bought the Bistro, um, they drove down from Oregon, uh, but they drove their car, a trailer, and about four animals, five animals. So they definitely can do it. Um, I have, what you do is you basically drive during the day, and then there's a lot of expat sites that will tell you where to stop, Mm -hmm. um, where to, where to eat. You don't want to drive at night. Um, you will have to pay duty. Um, but if you're on the retirement plan, um, you will not have to pay duty on your personal belongings in your truck, as long as the truck is like four years or newer. Um, but if you're not on the QRP, then you will have to pay some sort of duty. And it, it, it ranges depending on uh, what you're bringing and what type of vehicle, how many cylinders it is. Um, so some Pickup trucks are like 10%, and then you can get up like a eight cylinder Ford Excursion would be probably in the 56% range. Um, Y'all have anything you want to add to that? No, I, I think uh, I think covered it all there, David. I, I know with the vehicles, because we had looked at that, um, like you say, the bigger the engine, the higher you pay. Uh, they don't want gas colors in the, in the country, so... Uh, 
Uh, they want to make sure it, uh, people are using smaller, smaller engines, saving the fuel. Um, driving through, like David said, through Mexico, lots of, uh, lots of sites have that in there. So don't go, uh, point number one, don't go onto Facebook and ask the question. Just look it up because it's been asked probably 50 times per month <laughs> and people start getting frustrated answering the same question. They say, just Google it. It's in Facebook. Trust us. It's there. Like but, on the Placencia expat pages. Yeah. yeah. The, there's a couple guys who have given a super detailed stop at this place, stay at this hotel, only drive till five o'clock, yeah. get out like very, very detailed. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so yeah, don't, don't go in just asking the question. It, it's in there and it's very detailed. Uh, a couple of explanations in there for you, but yeah, exactly. Exactly. So very good on that. Um, so knowing what you know now, would you do anything differently? Would have done it sooner. I, 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 I say the, mm -hmm. like lots of, lots of our clients that come up are talking about retiring and when should I buy? When should I buy that kind of stuff? Um, what I've tried to encourage people to do, if you can't buy the house today, buy the land, mm -hmm. get the land or find somebody that will finance you a portion. There are some owners out there that will do some, some portion of financing. And then at least then you can, if you're doing the house idea and you can get somebody to finance it a little bit for you, you put it into an Airbnb package or rental pool. And then in five years, your house is basically paid for because mm -hmm. it's been in the rental pool. Um, but to wait five years and then say, okay, now I'm going to buy. That's, you know, I think it's, that's what I recommend. Just either buy land or buy a house that you can get into a rental uh, and then just let it be put in the system. There's most people don't understand that we don't have these massive um, hotels like Mexico, the six, 800 room, all inclusive resorts. We mm -hmm. don't have that. So we have resorts here that have 10 rooms. Well, everybody wants to come here. So where do they go? They go into the rental pool. And next thing you know, you're renting your house out or a room or something like that. So that's, that's why that market is really strong in Belize in general. Um, there are still a few hotels at chains that are starting to build up in the country. But right now, I'm going to say the majority of it's uh, rental Airbnbs, uh, Airbnbs or, or that kind of stuff. So that, that's what I'd recommend. Is, yeah, yeah, very good. Very good. Thomas is asking, um, he has $500,000. Can he get a good place on the beach? Um, that kind of depends on where. Um, you can definitely get something in that price range, like in uh, Chetamal Lagoon or Chetamal Bay, um, maybe in Hopkins, I, Placencia, those are gone. Um, you know, I tell people the best time to buy in Belize was probably 20 years ago. The <laughs> next best time is tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. Um, but we're not here to, you know, pressure you to buy. Um, but we have seen, I mean, in my 13 years being here, I've definitely seen prices go up uh, quite a bit. Um, some things have doubled and tripled and some things have not gone up quite that much. Um, just kind of depends. Um, but houses in Placencia, you're not going to be able, to my knowledge, find a house under 500000 no. um, in, in In Placencia right now, all those four to $500,000 homes are gone. Like, mm -hmm. it just seems like they... Two years ago, they were here and boom, they're all gone. Awesome. Um, Even and, the lagoon now, the homes on the lagoon, they're seven, 800,000. For the really nice ones, yeah. But yeah. Um, so what, what you're seeing a lot more now is lots being sold in construction. So if somebody had 500,000, I'd say either look at buying a lot and having something built, uh, whether or not you put a small wooden house on there for now until you can afford more or um, build as you go along. So, um, especially if you're trying to get on the beach, if you're trying to get on the Caribbean beach side, you're most likely going to have to buy a lot and build. So, which isn't yeah. a bad thing. If you got the time, I can yep. certainly help you with that. Sure. So Daryl's asking any hope of Progresso Heights will resurrect itself from the ashes. He has a property there. He needs to sell. Mm. Um, yeah, that's a good question. Um, I do see a ton of potential for Corazol. Um, just a lot of what I've hear, heard, uh, what I see is, you know, it, it's, it's coming soon. Um, that's why we're opening an office there. Um, I was there this week, like I mentioned, uh, we're picking a place to set up shop 
and it's there's just so much potential there's a lot of people that love to be able to i mean we were in mexico we were in corzal we hopped the border spent mm -hmm. four or five days there went to the mall the movies uh took my sons to you know um, mcdonald's they've never been um we did a lot of shopping there's home depot there's sam's club uh knocked out some doctor visits um so there's a lot of potential for for corazol um progresso heights i didn't get out there yet um i i, I mean i know there's quite a few lots out there for sale um you know reach out to me and and let's talk and see you know how we can help you to to sell it um is it on the water uh progresso heights i don't think so um is it? Mm. yeah it, it's a we're, little uh, we're having to head up there uh we've got some clients that funny they they came to buy property in independence and then looked into placencia and then Eventually, we drove them up to Corazal, and they ended up buying a farm up there. Mm -hmm. um, so they're coming back to buy a house in that same area. So uh, um, I got to go and drive up there and look at uh, preview some homes for them, and then um, so we can certainly take a look and see what's going on in that area as well. At the same time, when we're up there, for sure. Um, so Wendy's asking: Are there any beachfront properties that can be associated with a hotel for rental income? and then be able to convert to full-time living like Jaguar Beach. Um, I don't know if you can uh, so Jag Jaguar, Jaguar, sorry, David, Jaguar, we just, we're dealing with that with, with a client. Uh, Is there so a new building that they're doing right now? So you yes. can't live in, you can live in it full-time. Yeah. Uh, they don't have any restrictions on that. Um, or you can put it in the rental pool and they manage everything for you. Um, yeah. So in five years from now if you want to live there uh no problem uh, that is not i know Sri del mar you can um I'm, i just listed today um a three bedroom basically villa right on the ocean at alaya which is the marriott um i mean it's pricey it's it's full-time living if you want or they'll manage everything it's cash flowing but it's you know 2.4 um wow. so depending on budget you know there are a lot mahogany bay i have some properties here as well and it's a hilton product we're not on the ocean but we have a private beach and they'll manage it as well so you know there are different properties you just have to depending on your budget and what location you want you know we can probably get into that a little bit more if you want just let us know in the question and answer box you know what location um so thomas is asking i've heard that there's a problem with theft is that true um yeah there is there is petty theft um there's a big difference between the haves and the have nots you know and and the have nots really want the haves <laughs> and so <laughs> instead of working for it they prefer to steal it um but but we you know, we have also it's it's crime of opportunity they say so it's like you know if you're leaving your kayak exactly. laying outside and to them they're like okay well it's not really important to them if you like we have our kayaks we have four kayaks sitting on our shed right now they're not locked up they've been there for months but it's like Never. they can see that they're cared for and that they're in the spot that they're supposed to be and we've never had an issue with it so yeah you leave stuff out on the front on the street um yeah like you say petty you petty crime common like sense you you don't want to you don't want to leave your windows and doors unlocked um and go out for the day you don't want to leave your camera and your phone on the table and go to the restroom at a at a restaurant you wouldn't do that um, in new york either yeah exactly exactly so, that's what i'm saying it, it's just yeah. most of it's common sense i mean you have yeah, you know, people talk about how how much murders we have, I and mean, we have 120 murders a year, 125 a year, um, which is a couple weekends in. I don't want to say a city, you know, but in any city in in North America, yeah. you know, um, it, it just the 
why Belize is high if you look at it per capita, because we have 415,000 people in the country. Um, so if you look at it per thousand people, yeah, we're high. But if you look at it on a scale, like its majority is domestic, drug, um, and gang related. And it's usually concentrated in certain areas, a uh, bad part of town or with a known group of people that you don't want to be around. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, I've been here a long time and we just lost uh, somebody just took a, a brand new bottle of hand sanitizer out of our golf cart. Um, we left it in there, you know, and yeah, but yeah, we it, normally it. we normally leave bug spray and golf and and hand sanitizer in the golf cart and it's been there. But I guess this time somebody needed it more than we did. So um, <laughs> it's just, you know, just use common sense and you'll be you'll be fine. Mm -hmm. um, you can always yeah, find Gordon. applications. Doesn't matter what city you go to. Yep, exactly. Always, exactly. There's parts of uh, Chicago you wouldn't go to at night, and there's parts of Belize City I wouldn't go to at night. It's just exactly that's reality. Mm -hmm. So exactly. Uh, so Gordon's asking, can you share your agent's contact info and Corazol? And yeah, it's uh, Richard at FirstChoiceBelize.com, and Serena just threw it up in the uh, in the chat box, um, and he can help you. And Renee, hey Renee, how are you, ma'am? Um, she'll be in San Pedro on the 5th through the 9th. We'll be able to get, yes, you will be able to get with me and to see some properties. Um, she's staying at Mahogany and her and her husband were DJs at my first wedding. Um, so it was pretty, pretty cool. And they reached out and, and I was a bad friend. I didn't, uh, I didn't answer them right away. And and I feel bad, but uh, looking forward to having you all and appreciate you all coming on. And, and you know, if you miss today or, or you have to get off earlier, um, these are taped, as you know, and, and then we just do some editing to them. And then we, you know, we put them on our YouTube channel. Um, so we're, we're trying to categorize them so we can um, give you a better explanation so you don't have to, you know, watch every one. Um, but it, it, you know, happy for you to listen to them. And, and again, please spread the word. We do this because we like to, um, most of our business is education. You know, like Kim and Dean will tell you the property sells itself. The mm -hmm. belief sells itself. We don't have to sell you that. What we have to sell you is the education on what it's like to move here, live here full-time, part-time whatever, the process of buying, um, going through the QRP process. I mean, we don't just sell you a property and leave. We help you through everything. If you want us to help you with building, we can help you build. We can help you with property management, all that. So we really want to help educate you. And basically, like my mentors say, collapse timeframes. What took me 13 years to learn Mm -hmm. I don't want it to take you 13 years. I want to collapse those time frames. Um, what's taken them five years, three years, two years, whatever to learn, they want to collapse those time frames. Mm -hmm. So Laura's saying, hey guys, looking good. What's the duty that is charged when you order stuff from Amazon? Um, it really depends. Um, mo it most depends. of my stuff, I pay like 30 bucks a box. Yeah. Um, yeah. My box, they'll condense it. They'll put multiple exactly. packages into one box. Exactly. And so depending on when it comes into them, into their warehouse, as to how many times you're charged for stuffing that box. Because when they think that they are only getting six packages and then another six show up for you, well, now you got two boxes. So now you're paying 60. Yes. And so do y'all use Belizean Queen as yeah. well? Yeah. yeah. So that's who I use. So you just order everything It's with Amazon, you get it free shipping to their warehouse, wherever they have like five different warehouses and they'll condense it like Kim said, and, and then bring it to your house. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, it's, uh, it's pretty cool. I've, um, I've, never, I've never had a package opened just so people know, like they're, oh, they're yeah. not, not, they're not ripping open all the Amazon orders, looking at it, confirming it or anything. It literally is that package gets put into a bigger box and then you get that big box. And then the guy says, 
$60 Belize. And yeah, it's almost like they took the box and they lifted it. Oh yeah, that's about $50 worth. Yeah, okay, that's good. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. That seems to be out so I just ordered, I just ordered two computers from Dell and um, they were $300 um, Belize for the both. Um, that's shipping and duty. So, you know, even though it's two boxes, electronics are going to be more. Yeah. Um, but, you know, on average, if you, if you order stuff like, you know, how we do, um, Gumi Bears, whatever, they will, they'll just condense it and charge you 30 bucks a box. Mm -hmm. um, if we were to buy a house and then rent it out, how much does a property manager cost? Um, so that's a good question. Um, I don't think we've talked a lot about that in detail. Um, a long term is going to be about 10%. And then a short term will be any, anywhere between 20 to 30%, yeah. 50%, depending on, you know, if it's a, if it's a hotel or something like that. Um, I wouldn't really look at the percentage, I'd look at more of what's included because I can tell you 25% and beat everybody else, but then I charge you everything else extra. Mm -hmm. um, so always look at what's included, what they charge, and then look at your net. Um, but basically, if you're going to be passive and have the hotel or the resort do everything or have the property manager do everything, you're roughly going to pay. 60, 70%, but then they're going to do everything. And I'm talking, I'm talking net to you. So that's utilities, maintenance, everything, you know, it's going to be, you know, kind of net to you. Y'all find that to be about the same? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was going to say that 30% mark seems to be, uh, yeah, if it's a, which is Bacasa and what's the other one? Yeah, flowers, property management, you know, yeah, yeah. they're in that range, but they take care of everything from anything that needs to be fixed around the property, filling them, and they're often filled, which is really nice. And you can tell because where, where they have the golf carts that are connected with the different companies, you always see those carts that are out. So you know that their places are filled. So yeah. they're doing a good job. And stay tuned. We're going to be releasing Remax First Choice Property Services soon. Um, we're already doing some long-term stuff. Uh, we just haven't uh, released. We're trying to work all the kinks out, but uh, we're going to release that countrywide. So we're starting Placencia, Hopkins, and Corazal, or Placencia, Hopkins, and San Pedro first. Corazal will be next. Um, so stay tuned for that. Um, shout out to an awesome couple. I went to a Two week holiday at their beautiful property and stayed two months. So that's uh, Deb Murray. Hi, Deb. <laughs> Shout out. Thanks, yeah. Deb. So very good. It was a long um, two weeks, but we loved it. <laughs> <laughs> and hey, I think she rebooked again to come back. Yeah, that's it. She's already booked in for the next one. That's funny. That's funny. That's great. Um, so how is the health care and what are the costs like? Um, very good question. Um, I went very much in depth on that at a previous um, webinar. We had a doctor on and we talked about cost and things like that. But the nickel tour, um, 75 Belize to 100 Belize to see a specialist, um, 60 Belize in Mexico to see, uh, that's the equivalent, 60 Belize equivalent from a peso to Mexican, or yeah, from Mexican peso to a Belize uh, to see a, a specialist there. And um, I mean, we had a C-section uh, for my son. I did, my Melissa did. Yeah, <laughs> um, it was, uh, was 2,500 US uh, at a private hospital. Um, that's the OBGYN, that's the surgeon, anesthesiologist, the pediatrician, three days in a private room, uh, me staying there, and everything that was, was 2,500. That, that was in, in Belize City, yep. Um, 
So basically a doctor visit is going to cost you about 50 bucks, Belize, 65 Belize. And it's all cheaper here, right? Um, Mexico in uh, Merida is a phenomenal place. Everybody speaks English there. The doctors speak English. Um, so if you want to see a specialist, you can do that. Um, some things are pretty reasonable. Some things are pretty, ex not, you know, pretty kind of expensive, I guess. Um, Serena's husband had like a $10,000 quote at uh, a dentist in Florida, and they did everything for like 2,500 Belize, uh, less than 2,500 Belize. Um, so dental is very good. There's, there's like a, what I call dentist touristy, touristy medical tourism is, is starting to get pretty big here. Um, braces are cheaper. All that's pretty cheap here. Um, also Daryl said it's a waterfront on Cocos Lagoon. Um, wow. That's pretty cool. Um, yeah, that sounds, that sounds really nice. Um, yeah, get with me on that. Let me know how much and, and then um, not sure who it's listed with or is it listed with us? Um, I don't think so, uh, but let me know and we can, uh, we can definitely kind of help you try to get it moved. Um, he's asking what your thoughts are about uh, the Mennonites and how has inflation hit Belize over the last 18 months? So I will start that and then I'll turn it over to them as well. Um, the Mennonites um, have a couple different types of grade houses. Their first grade, which is their rough grade, rough cut lumber, things like that is pretty rough. Um, it doesn't tend to last as long, um, but then they have like a, a great grade, you know, a, a high grade house, um, which will last you pretty, pretty well. I mean, I've seen some high grade Mennonite houses last through category five hurricanes in Placentia. Um, so very different, you know, um, I will say by the time you add all the upgrades, you want to add like the hurricane clips, insulation, better windows, AC, granite countertops, things like that. You might as well stick build and get what you want. Although they will customize some things. Um, inflation. Well, let me, I'll take that one first. Let, let's add it. You know, Kim, y'all, Dean, y'all have anything to add to that? I think the, the nice thing about the Mennonite that I really like is that when you go to their website, when they say, okay, you're getting a 16 by 20 or 16 by 40, whatever it is, and it comes with three outlets. And if you want to add one more and it's $3 and 78 cents more, you know exactly what your price is going to be. So you want to change that upgrade that, you know, down to the penny, what the upgrade is going to be. So yeah. You know, sometimes with a build, it's kind of like, okay, well, you know, 150 per square foot, like it, it's a little kind of up in the air there. And so, you know, depending on what the wood cost that month or whatever, so that price can fluctuate, whereas it feels like when you get that quote from them, it is on point. Yeah, yes, that is true. That is true. And they, you know, they have, they have some houses right there. Um, if you want to customize it, it might take a while, but if you buy the house that's on the lot, then you can get it pretty fast. But like, uh, Linda Vista is probably one of my favorites. Um, they have like a six month, eight month waiting list right now. Yeah. Um, so it's pretty, it's pretty high. Um, but then, They're you know, beautiful. there are some that, you know, like I said, they have their houses right there and, and you can get them. Um, a lot of people will. Um, put a Mennonite house on their property just to get in there and finish it themselves and then build their house in front of that on the water or whatever, you know, later on um, and then rent the, the Mennonite house out first. Yeah, I think um, I was saying earlier, Dave, with the, the gentleman that had the question about the $500,000 budget, um, that, that is quite common is that you'll see people buy the lot, they'll throw a Mennonite house in the back corner, um, live in it, and then when they have a chance to build the, the nice house up front, and then they turn the Mennonite house into their caretaker suite or a rental. Guest unit. cottage yeah. or a rental. So exactly. Yeah. And I, I find that some people look at Mennonite houses almost like negative. It's cheap, but 
it's still good quality. Like it, they're using hardwoods as a two by four and not like, you know, it's not the stuff that we have at Home Depot back in uh, North America. Um, mm -hmm. and, and their finishing is actually pretty good. Like you say, when you get to their A quality, their product line and you can walk around their, their site and actually see what the difference is between the B grade and A grade, like it, it's pretty nice. I, it, mm -hmm. uh, I wouldn't have, I would not have a problem buying one no. and uh, putting it down. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, like, like the, the A grade, which is the highest grade is like, you know, 16 inches on center, whereas yeah. the other ones are probably 24 inches on center or something like that. So, um, and a little lesser quality wood, um, instead of two by fours, they're two by threes and, and, and things like that. Yeah. Um, but it, yeah, they're definitely going higher in price. Um, because materials are going up and, and things like that. But inflation, it's, it's here. Um, and it's not stagflation like uh, your US government wants you to believe. Um, it, it's, you know, it's here. We have in Belize, we have, you know, what is it? 16, 15, $15 gas, you know, Belize. I think yep. it's 15, maybe 16. It, it hit 16, it might be coming down a little bit. Um, a lot of things are going up. Um, our lumber tend not to go up as high as in the U.S. because we have different places we can get it. Like when there was a shortage on plywood, the, the people here were buying it from Brazil. So, you know, the sheets of plywood weren't as high as, as before. Um, but if, there's, if it's coming from the U.S., then it, it could be, you know, higher. Um, and I think we talked about that on last month's as well, um, you know, inflation, but things are higher, flour, sugar, chicken, everything's get going up, you know? Yeah. Um, so people are, people are feeling it. Um, Tom's is saying, me and Barbara coming to Placencia September 25th to the second. Can we come by and say hi? So I hope you do. Absolutely. Hope you do. Um, and then I think Serena, you put uh, in the chat box, um, their email address as well. Um, so Tyron's saying, how do the Mennonite homes stand up in the seaside weather, salt water? Um, they, they do pretty good. Um, another client of mine in Maya Beach just put one up. He put up a Linda Vista and um, he finished the inside himself because he wanted to and that's what he does back in Canada. Um, like I said, I've seen houses on the ocean um, withstand a category five um, hurricane in iris in 01 02 i wasn't here then but i know the house was there um then um so they can hold up really well um so it's it's pretty you know it's pretty it, it's fine yeah our, um, our our house um when you go to the website see la vie belize you'll see that uh, it's a wood structure and uh if you go on google earth um, and go backwards in the years and see our house that we're currently in um, is well over 20 years. And you can see there's nothing that was here. It was a dirt road, trees everywhere. Much. And the only thing that's happened over the years was the pier was taken out, but it was because of maintenance or nobody took care of it. And over the time, it just rotted away. Mm -hmm. And then a little splash of a wave basically took it over and and from what I understand, our next door neighbor actually went out there and cut, uh, put it on fire just to add some entertainment one night. So, um, <laughs> but uh, honestly, when you look at it and you're like, people say, oh, you got to have a, a cement build house. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. It, you can build a good quality. If you're going to put up uh, paper walls, then yeah, you're going to have a problem. But if you do a good quality wood construction, um, then absolutely not a problem at all. And obviously, the Mennonite homes, they're built in Belize, so they know what they're dealing with mm -hmm. weather-wise. So, they don't want their product to fall over tomorrow either. So uh, yeah, they'll, they'll stand up, not a problem. Very good. Uh, Laura's asking, so do you declare the contents generally and not necessarily the value? Um, and I don't know if I want to answer that question on the air. You know what, they, <laughs> you know what? they um, never asked us. We've never had to say like- What, on a purchase? If you're coming in, if you're coming in, um, so I go back to the States a lot for my investment meetups and, you know, meeting with my mentors and all that. I'm always sending stuff to my hotel and I declare everything. I write down what it is and things like that. Um, but I do, 
lower the value and it only caught me once. And that was on a ring system. They looked it up and said, dude, that's not what you paid for. And they went on Amazon and, and they charged me a higher duty. Uh, but normally I, I, don't, um, I don't get deemed that bad. Um, but uh, hey, that's, you know, it, it depends. But you're allowed as a, for us, you know, that live here, um, that you're allowed like 250, 500 Belize dollars worth of stuff to come in one time a year. I do that probably every eight weeks um, and pay very little duty, if, if any. Sometimes they'll ding me, sometimes they won't. Um, we just crossed the border over from Mexico, like I told you, and they didn't ding us for nothing. And we brought clothes, we brought some fabric and, and things like that. And, and you know they didn't ding us at it at all. And I think one of the big things too, David, is that when you're bringing things in, they don't want you to be bringing things in that you're going to be selling. So if it's all packaged up and if it's looking new with tags that you might be selling that item, whereas if you're bringing it in, bringing it in and using it as your personal, not a problem. Yeah, just depends on how, if they're in a good mood or a bad mood at the airport and always take the tags off. <laughs> you need to add that part out of the video. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, Daryl, how costly is Belize power? Dude, that, it is very costly. It's uh, 42 cents Belize per kilowatt hour. That's the, uh, the, the rate in um, residential rate. Uh, the, the commercial rate's a little higher. Um, we do buy our power, majority of our power from Mexico. Um, and so Belize upcharges it, you know, to run their grid and run their utilities. Um, we have butane. It's pretty reasonable. I think butane, it's, it's about five bucks a, a pound, um, if you will. Um, water depends on where you're at. In town, I pay a penny a gallon in Placencia. At my house in San Pedro, I pay 13 cents a gallon. And Kim and Dean in Maya Beach, y'all pay uh, six cents, right? Uh, I, think we're, cents I think we're a little bit more, well, Maya Beach is that price, but we are connected to Naya. Our house is connected off the Naya Resort. So we're so 50. We, we're pay, a, we pay $50 for the first. pay $50, yep. Yeah, that's what I pay it. Gallon and my rental oh, in Maya yeah. Beach. Yeah. Yep. So, Very good. Um, $25 US. So not bad. You could drill a well. Um, yeah. Daryl, you know, you could. Not sure. Depend on where you're at. Um, depend on if you go deep enough, you probably could get a good, a good well. If you're on a stream or freshwater lagoon or freshwater creek or something like that, you can probably pull the water out and, and, and do that. But it rains um, here a lot. It yeah. rains here a lot and it's usually at night. So we, you know, here we do the rain catchment and we have the big cisterns that we just- Good point. That's yeah, what we use. I, I, you can put the filter right on. Yeah, we haven't even used the uh, city water in the last three months. Yeah. So we Good have two point. tanks in the back that collect the rain off the roof. And we, I still pay $50 because it's their flat fee, whether we use it or we don't, but right. I'm using city water or uh, storm water right now, so. Right. Um, yeah. So, you know, it's um, we do use solar here. Um, the batteries are pretty expensive. Um, we have Tesla batteries. We have um, solar panels and things like that. Um, EVs are not really practical yet. I know there's like most people with golf carts, they have gas golf carts. Um, there are diesel, a lot of diesel trucks because diesel is usually cheaper, but not all the time. Um, we already talked about the electrical rates, as, as Tom said. Um, what else? Um, COVID tests. So COVID update, um, there's nothing. Um, you don't need to be tested coming to Belize. You don't need to be tested going to um, the U.S. Um, so you're, you're good to go. It's super easy now. I just got back from the States uh, two weeks ago. And it was so cool. No mask, no nothing. Um, again, if you'd like to wear a mask, you can. Do what? 
there's still one place in Placencia, and that's the bank that you still have to the wear bank. a mask. Yes. But in Dangriga, yes. you don't have to. Yes. Yes. However, they made me wear one when I had to go to the Treasury Department um, to pay for my gun license. They made me wear a mask. Um, so there are a couple places in no, Mexico. I had to wear a mask in a lot of places. Isn't it strange? Oh, really? Strange that you got to wear a yeah. mask. Gun license. Yeah. <laughs> in Mexico, so, really. Hmm. So Kevin's asking, um, do you have any recommendation of good contractors and installers of off-grid hydro and solar systems near the Middlesex, St. Margaret area? Um, also, any Mennonite stick-built contractors you would recommend in that area? Um, yeah, Kevin, we do have, I have several. Um, LB is a good friend of mine. He has a company in San Pedro and Placencia and he's doing his off-grid stuff. Um, so you can definitely reach out to me and I can get you his contact info. Um, Mennonite stick built in the middle six area. Um, I, I would think that the Lowens would go out that way. Um, Albert, is it Albert Lowen? And uh, yeah, Albert, Albert. Yeah. would do that. So, um, so thank you um, for your questions that we're at the top of the hour. Um, happy to stay on longer if you have any more questions. Um, but if not, then, uh, and I don't see any, then we will let you all go. And thank you so much for listening. Um, normally we're at seven o'clock Mountain Standard Time. So this was our first one at six o'clock and it seemed to have, we had a pretty good, um, you know, attendance. Uh, our next All Access Belize is September 1st at 6 o'clock uh, Belize time or 7 central time. And Belize right now is on Mountain Standard Time until the U.S. changes their clocks. Then we go to central time. Um, and Serena put in the chat. Uh, Kim and Dean, thank you so much for joining thank us. Any last minute, um, any last minute uh, comments, Hi. questions? I would say for anybody that's considering uh, moving or investing, ask questions. Find somebody that you trust or connect with and stick with that person, agency, or whether whoever the agent is. Um, don't go phoning 30 different agents for 30 different units. Find somebody so that they can actually understand truly what you're looking for mm -hmm. and help you get all those answers. So it... Uh, um, Whoever it is, make that sure you they show find. you everybody's property, not just yes, exactly. their property. Yes, yeah. exactly. So I, I'd say that's, that's that'd be probably one of my biggest pet peeves with people coming in the country. Uh, they they they're all over the place, and and uh, you, you want to from our side of things, we want to service and help and answer all your questions as much as we can. And mm -hmm. and that I guess is one of the reasons why Kim and I have the tendency to go anywhere in the country is because we want to see that client find the right spot. So it. Uh, um, yeah, that's, that's kind of my, uh, my suggestion. So, Very and good. I just think if there's anything that you're like, you know, if it's something that you've thought about for a long time, it's like, just take the leap. It's a leap of yep. faith. And it's like, you know, you can always change it if you decide to, it's like, you don't need to be committed forever. You can come for five years, 10 years, 15 years, six months, whatever it is. But it's like, until you do it, you don't know. And it's like, yeah it's an amazing experience so very good yeah thanks everyone see you next month on all access police september 1st and thank you so much for joining kim and dean thank, thank you, you and we'll see you all next week Serena, thank you sweetie thanks serena